Yeah, so I just have the starting soon uh, screen up. Nameless Nick, how's it going? We're gonna get started in just a second. But how have you been? Hopefully you can hear me okay. Happy Mental Health Awareness Month. Oh geez, you in there working too, right? <laughs> I was even expecting that. Oh hey Dub, thank you so much for coming in. How are you? Do they got new wigs? I need I need to I need to go into the store. I need to go into the store. It's been a while. Yeah, doing okay. I'm having I have a feeling today's gonna be a bit emotional. So um I've got my tissues ready. <laughs> I got a good friend ready with me. Ray Sunshine's with me today. I'm pretty happy. I'm super excited for our first stream together. I don't know where I put my water though. Um Ooh, you know Lily? I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I'm going to run and get some water really quick. I'll, I'll be right back in like two seconds. That's funny, I pick up a bottle and it was a bottle of vodka, it was not my water. But yeah, ready to start, Ray? Okay. Oh hey, Plandy, thanks for coming in today. Is that Amy? I'm not I'm not too sure. I don't mean a doxy or anything. <laughs> but welcome in. Alright. So let's get started. <laughs> Oh, hey, Amy, thank you so much for coming in. So uh, today I'm here with uh, Ray Sunshine 92. Um, make sure you give her a follow too. Let me uh, let me give her a shout out. There we go. Oh, hey, Mystic, thank you so much for uh, coming in today. Um, so we'll be talking about narcissistic uh, parents today. Um, and. You know, me and Ray both grew up with narcissistic parents. Um, for me, it was my mom. Um, for Ray, I think it was both of your parents, right? Ooh, I can't hear you. Can you guys hear her? Oh, what happened? Because I can see you talking. I can't hear you, though. It was working, I swear. <laughs> it was. But yeah, thank you guys for coming in today. Um... Give us one second. It was working earlier. Did 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 uh, Discord just close for me? Cause that could be it too. Could you try talking again? Let's get a sound check. Yeah, it's still not coming through. Your little icon thingy's not lighting up. Um, but I guess I can talk a little. Oh, there you go. Oh, you can hear me now. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. That <laughs> that was weird. That was super weird. Um, you ready to cry this morning, absent-minded cat? Thank you so much for coming in today. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll be doing a little bit of crying, but that's okay. Um, it's good to talk about your feelings and let them out even, you know, there's nothing wrong with crying. It's it's another outlet, I think. Um, but uh, Ray, did you want to start things off or should I talk a little bit about narcissism or what do you think? Oh, you again? Oh, you're it. You're back. You're back. 
Okay. You can hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you, yeah. I don't know why it keeps going in and out. Uh, okay, yeah. You said Ray sounds really quiet. Let me um pump up her volume. All right. Huh? Ray, can I get another sound check when you're you're all set? Um, but how many in the chat uh know a narcissistic person or um have narcissistic parents? Hey, Spikeu, how you doing? Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for your donation the other day. That was really nice of you. I hope you had fun at dinner with your wife. <laughs> you know some narcissists? Yeah. So I feel like um, people who are narcissists, they tend to encroach on your boundaries, your personal space. They kind of just like really, they kind of see you as property almost. Um, so, you know, growing up in that kind of environment um you kind of like lose sense of yourself you're not like your own person you're kind of made you're, you're kind of property you're kind of made to live for another person um so for me the narcissist in my life were my mom and my aunt and i'm 40 now and as a result i'm i'm just discovering all this stuff all these behavioral issues i have because i was never given the space to kind of develop into my own person. And I don't know if that's true for you, Ray. Did you want to speak on that? Or are you doing something? <laughs> oh, hey, Drew. Hey, Luna. Thanks for coming in, you guys. Let me give you guys shout outs. Oh, hey, Serge. Thank you so much for coming in. What did I change your, your, your shout out to? <laughs> there we go. And Serge came in, let me see. Serge, you, you changed your name so many times, I don't even remember what your, your thing was. Is that it? No. I think I changed it to basement. Is it basement? <laughs> yeah. But follow Serge, cause now, yeah, let me just give you a, <laughs> give you a shout out on here. Um, with your other name. There we go. All right. Um, oh, Drew, thank you for the shout outs. Um, so I think Ray's fixing her audio. Uh, she's moving to a different mic. Uh, but while that's happening, um, I know I've been very transparent with you guys about what's been going on with me um, and my struggles, just so you feel more comfortable with being vulnerable and being able to open up. Um, so like, I had a therapist appointment like last Friday and um, since then it's like it's been really hard uh, processing what happened to me and it's like the more people I talk with like the more messed up I thought things were. Um, so one thing that narcissistic people tend to do is they tend to put weight on you. They make you feel guilty about stuff they feel guilty about and they put it on you so they don't feel that weight they don't need to be bothered by it um, and that's a big thing that happened to me um, I carried so much guilt for so long and you know that guilt like once I figured out like a lot of that stuff wasn't my fault um, it turned to anger and you know I've been since Friday I've been analyzing like where the anger has been coming from but have you guys ever had that happen to you have you ever had somebody place guilt on you that that wasn't yours and what did you do about it let me scroll down i think i missed some stuff i think i'm back maybe yeah yeah, yeah I, I hear you i hear you um okay cool i don't know did you hear any do you have anything to to say on any of the stuff i was speaking oh, on i was cutting in and out the whole time because of trying to fix my audio oh over here. no that's so weird because it was fine before we even started <laughs> that's just it just I figures know. It just figures. Um, it's my luck, because I'm a very soft-spoken person to begin with. Yeah. 
uh, Spiker says, my mom was hard on us. I really didn't get out of it until my wife helped me. Um, I think same with me. Uh, Drew says, such a great topic. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I hope people can just open up if you feel like opening up and talk about it. Um, you know, I won't judge you. Um, I think everybody, especially like men, you know, I know there's like a lot of stigma about men opening up and showing their emotions, but that's wrong. Always feel like, you know, if you have friends, just talk about things, open yourself up, don't suffer alone. Um, Cause like, I think, you know, from my perspective, my dad was in an abusive relationship and he should have got help. And, you know, you know, he was the man of the house. So he probably felt like he couldn't, but um, you know, me and my, my sister had to grow up watching him be abused by my mom. And, you know, that probably does more damage than, you know, some image that, you know, somebody's trying to project, like, if things aren't okay, it's okay to let people know things aren't okay. But um, I think Dub said something. He said, my father is that way, and me and my sister deal with him still until this day. Um, and Luna says, I'm still recovering, denying shit mentally. I mean, I know that we all kind of, like, we stuff things down so that we can cope. I did that for a long time. That's how I'm here. I'm 40 and I'm just discovering things about myself. I'm just discovering all these, this guilt I've been carrying wasn't mine to carry and that people did that to me so that they can be more comfortable with themselves and they didn't have to deal with themselves. In turn, I was suffering all this time and I'm still angry about it. Um, and I'm hoping I can get over it one day, but um, I think uh, Serge said something too. You're a survivor of physical, mental, and emotional abuse. I, same here, same here. Um, and it, it's hard because it really, especially when you're a child, you're vulnerable and, you know, you learn things and you think it's normal. And then when you find out they're not, it's hard to process, especially when, you know, if you didn't learn how to process your emotions and things that happened to you, if you weren't, you, nobody taught you how to talk about things. Um, it, it's, it's very hard to learn later on in life. Um, yeah, <laughs> let me, um, let me uh, keep reading to see what you guys are saying. You said you get that a lot from people in the FGC. I mean, I bet it's, it's I think it's people everywhere. Um, I, it, it's nice when you get into a community because people start to open up a little bit, but um, yeah, it's, yeah, it, it runs rampant everywhere. Um, you said, um, Kat, you're saying, especially with your mom, you spent way too long trying to help, um, her and your, uh, and your family until it would get to breaking point. I cut them off officially last year and go in and out of feeling guilty, but you feel so much happier. I know so much how you feel. Like, I, I know, I'm going to start getting teary eyed in a second. Like, let me grab my tissues. But, um, when, um, when I got married to my husband, I didn't invite anybody from my mom's side of the family. Um, my aunt was trying to figure out um, where the wedding was because I think she was just going to show up. Uh, and I don't know how she expect what she expected from that. But I had cut my mom out of my life, like kind of, but not really. But I just, I like, you know, this weekend was really eye-opening for me. So I cut her out completely. Like, I hate to say this, but her and my aunt they're dead to me and they need to be in order to move it, in order for me to move on and i know it sounds harsh but you know after knowing all the stuff that they did to me and then knowing that they'll never be held accountable for what they've done and they'll never acknowledge it they won't even listen to me they don't deserve to be in my life and you know what you did the right thing and i know it's hard like I have to carry the guilt that, you know, my mom's going to die and I'm never going to see her again. And, you know, it's, it's hard to be okay with that because, you know, there's been so much conditioning too. Um, Ray, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm so sorry. You doing okay? For me, I, did, yeah, uh, I'm good. I'm just okay. I, I'm following along. Okay. Did you, did you want to say anything? I know I'm talking a lot. I wasn't sure if the audio was okay. Oh, yeah. No. So like... Can you guys hear Ray okay? Um, Serge said that he's uh, a survivor of physical, mental, and emotional abuse. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to um, the emotional and the mental, that was my mom. My dad's 
Well, and my mom to a point. But my dad's the one that always took things a step too far on the physical abuse. Like, between my one of my older sisters and my brother, we had to pull him off of my one sister. Oh, my God. Because, like... He was beating her like she was a man. And mind you, she was like 14. Jesus. Did anybody ever, um, like, report him? No. Because, you know, according to my mom, yes, my, yes, he stepped overboard. He went a little overboard, but she shouldn't have done what she did. She was 14. She, had, she takes after my parents and she has an attitude problem. Like... There's yeah. ways to deal with it without beating the crap out of a 14-year-old kid. I mean, I think a lot and... of that stuff comes from, you know, things that they're dealing with themselves. They have some unresolved issues because that sounds like just anger. And you don't take anger like that out on a child, you know? No, like, my my dad's not a role model, like, at all. Like, when I say, like, this man, like, has been drinking to the point where he's like if they drunk since he was nine i'm not exaggerating hmm. so like and like I, oh sorry go ahead um he would go to school drunk and like for a while like he like he had cleaned up his act like he was 12 years sober and all of a sudden he's just like i'm gonna knock up this person and start drinking again and then just grew up everything that i have worked so hard for and then blame my mom for it because she had her tooth cut. Jeez. Do you, do you know why she had her tooth tied? She had a miscarriage. Okay, so with I was her last actual pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Her four pregnancies were all preterm. Okay. And when I decided that I was going to come out a month early, I almost took us both out. Yeah. And... She didn't have gotten pregnant again, and when she did have it, uh, the last time she got pregnant, she ended up having a miscarriage, ended up in the hospital for it. Okay. Had to get a tubal, and my dad wasn't wasn't for it, even though she almost died. So, so um, you know, I just heard that you said, you know, you decided to come out early. Like, it even sounds like you have blame for it. Is that, like, language they use to you when they talk oh, to you no. about it? like... It so my mom has a lot of health issues, but p- part of her part of her back problems are my fault. Yeah, and that and that's not right. I w- I decided to come out early and then stop. And since I decided to stop coming out, she needed a C section, and I almost killed us both. But it's her body. It was all my fault. It's your bo- It's her body. I didn't choose to be here. Yeah, I I, I, I know. She was gonna spread them, mm-hmm. and she got knocked up. That is her fault. Yeah, I mean, I just so happen to be very competitive and win that race. <laughs> I mean, also like it's her body that's delivering you. You had nothing to do with it. You're just laying there, and the fact and that she even blames like you know how difficult your birth was like that's that's not right. You know, that's not right. Um, it's all my fault, even though the other three kids that she popped out were all premature, too. I was the only one she didn't pop out. They had to pull me out of her. Yeah, you probably knew it was coming. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sorry that was your experience with your mom talking about how you were born and stuff. Like, that's... Yeah. Yeah, that's According that's pretty... to her, it wasn't a good experience. Like, I, I think labor is one of the most disgusting things like the yeah. whole, like until the baby's clean like i want nothing to do with it and mind you i had two <laughs> kids but i won't ever tell my kids that they were gross until they got cleaned up yeah or that it was their fault that that this and this happened no like jason got stuck and violet decided to count that that things were getting cramped in there and she accidentally punched the a hole in the water and I was just like it's time for you to go <laughs> yeah it sounds tough to be like pregnant and stuff like that um let's see like, it's not easy but it's not something I blame either one of my kids for I decided that I was going to be grown enough to 
make grown up decisions and I had kids. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, um, like I'm not having kids and I decided that because like the way my, like not my parents, but like really my mom, the way she like messed up my, my life, like I don't want to put my issues on kids. I don't want to mess up their life. Like she messed up mine. Not that like, you know, I, I was still able to accomplish things, you know, like I was talking to my cousin yesterday and she helped me realize, you know, just because they took so much power from me, it doesn't dictate like who I am and where I go from here, you know? Um, and I, I, I've accomplished things. They can't hurt me anymore. Like I get to leave them in the past and move on with my life. And I think that's what's gonna kind of help me get through the anger of never getting the justice that I think I deserve, you know? I mean, how do you deal with that? Okay, so you have success. Like, you have <laughs> put yourself in a situation where, like, you can cut her off. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's and true. you, like, you can just go and do what you want and live your life, and whatever justice you think you deserve, it's up to you to get. I get physically sick as soon as I even think about cutting out my family. And I'm not talking about like, oh, I don't feel good. Like, I mean, like I start running fevers, like I'm physically ill. And that's crazy and, that they were able to do that. Like, like, how did they do that to you? How were they able to mentally no program like, you to, to like, to for it to affect you physically? I remember I was like, I don't know, like maybe two and a half, three years old. They put me in this church play and I was, I had to be this little, one of the little thief on stage. As soon as my mom got off stage, so did I. And I ran mm. and I had wanted nothing to do with the play because my mom wasn't up there. And so I just, I ran and I ran around the whole auditorium until I found her. And then like, she would drop me off at my grandma's house. I would literally cry from the moment she dropped me off to the moment she picked me up. Like, to the point where, like, a four-year-old having, like, anxiety attacks and panic attacks, like, that early because you dropped her off. Yeah. Like, the separation anxiety alone was debilitating. Like, I, you would see me, like, at the gate like this, just holding on waiting for her screaming for her to come home i wonder i wonder what it was that made it that made you so dependent on them like what they did to make you believe that you needed them to the point where you're like panicking like this let me go back to the chat because the chat's going off popping off and i haven't been paying attention let me go back through to what you guys are saying sorry about that um let's see um, uh, Planty said, it's hard to watch people I love accept the abuse from parents like that. I think people stay because they hold on to the idea of what they thought their parents were, could be, uh, not because of their actual being. And I think that's true. Um, I think one thing about this culture, they push this idea that, you know, your family's blood and, you know, you're, you're supposed to stick with your family no matter what. And that couldn't be further from the truth because... You know, you're born into your family. You don't have a choice of who your family is. Um, and just because you end up with some people, that doesn't mean you have to take their abuse. They're, they they have no right. They have no right. Um, it should be the opposite. We need to, like, rethink of how, like, who family is. Family should be there for you in your hardest times. Not make you do things because they got issues, but be there for you and show up because they support you. And that's what family is. And if your blood family isn't that, then you need to go find yourself another family, um, which, you know, I think, I think it's totally possible. Like, I, like, I grew up so isolated. Um, and that's another thing narcissists do. They tend to isolate people um, from fans, friends and family um, just so that they're able to 100% control you and manipulate you. Ray, when you were growing up, did you have, like, were you able to contact like outside family and friends and stuff like that? Did you have problems with that? So the only place that I was allowed to go 
without my mom was youth group. And that's where I met my best friend, which to this day, like, I was nine when I met her. And, like, to this day, if I pick up the phone and call her, like, she'll still answer and we'll talk like there's no time has passed. Yeah. Um, but she was the only person who my mom would allow me to spend time with. And it's, it's so weird. And that's because my mom knew her. And her mom is just as bad, if not worse, than my mom. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, she like she and I got along great. Like, my um, best friend and I, like, we, we got along great because we shared so much in common. But I was always that kid that, like, I would seek out attention even though I didn't want it. Mm-hmm. Because my parents didn't train me to socialize. The only people that I actually spoke with were my three siblings that I lived with. And yes, I have a big family. I have seven siblings total. There was only three of us that were together all the time. Mm -hmm. And besides those three, I didn't communicate with anybody else. Unless it was somebody she approved of. So when I finally, like, hit middle school like I wanted friends like I wanted to not feel so isolated and like such a like a big misfit and just like a huge outcast and I I felt like it was me and everybody was staring at me like what the hell is wrong with her Mm -hmm. so I finally found like a few like a few friends and they were friends, those were the only people that I spoke with from middle school all the way up to graduate, well, not my graduation, I got kicked out because of my health, um, up until my last day of high school. Mm-hmm. And I made so many bad choices because of my mom, then if she would have just given me just a little bit of freedom, I could have avoided yeah um yeah your experience sounds similar to mine except for like the only person i could really contact only had contact with was my sister so me and my sister are war buddies like we've been through the trenches together um and i think that's why we're so close like we have really nothing in common (laughs) but like we are so close she's like you know she's like one of my best friends because you know we've been through these experiences together and when i needed somebody to stand up for me you know she would be there um you know and i i didn't have that yeah um because i mean it's weird when you get into situations like that with other people like my dad my sister and and me were all really close because we had this like common enemy you know uh let me go back through this chat though um so Luna says, uh, oh, you're l- mentally broke today. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, if you want to talk about stuff too, um, I, I'll have some time after, uh, after the stream today. Uh, Mr. Beatdown came in. Hey, hey, hope you're good. Um, Picnic has some extra tissues. I'm so behind in this chat. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, Luna went to go do some stuff. Um, I'm going to skip down a bit. Oh, Troopy, thank you so much for coming in. How are you? Did I give you a shout-out? Let me give you a shout-out. Um, but I hope you're well. Thank you so much for coming by. I know, I need to visit more of you guys' streams. It's been a busy month. <laughs> there we go. Um, let's see. It says you, uh, Kat said you have to kind of grieve them as if they died, but you're grieving the people they were never to you. It's that, oh man, that just like, that hits me. <laughs> that hits me right here. Cause like, that's exactly it. It's like, you, you, you have hope that they'll change, but you kind of know they never will. And it's hard to be like, I need to put these people behind me because I need to keep growing. And if they're not going to grow too, then you, you just got to move on. And it's, it's hard. It's hard. Um, Because, you know, my mom being such a big presence in my life, it's, it's hard to be like, I need, I need to let you go. And my aunt too. Um, yeah. All right. And Kenny came through. Hey, Kenny, how are you? Thank you so much for uh, coming by. Luna's lurking. Thanks for the lurk. Um, Serge says if anybody needs to talk, uh, you can DM him. Um, but you know, he wants to help. 
thank you so much, Serge. I mean, I think it's it's a it's a great idea, and um, and if you guys like streams like this, um, I can I can keep doing them. I, I feel like we're not gonna even scratch the surface of this subject. There's so much, there's so much to talk about. I know, um, Ray, you have a lifetime of experiences. Me, I'm just finding stuff still out. Going. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I'm still finding out stuff. Um, Drew, Droopy said, family doesn't mean blood. You can have relationships with people um, that are closer and way, way uh, stranger than uh, with biological family, which is 100% true. Uh, the blood of the covenant is thicker than water of the womb. I like that. I want to pin that. Hold on, hold on. Let me pin that. <laughs> um, oh, now I can't see my chat. <laughs> um people always used to say blood is thicker than water and it wasn't until i was older that i realized that i wasn't the full, that it wasn't the full quote the actual full quote is the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb translation the relationship we choose to go into with people are more important than the ones we're born into exactly that was that. and yeah that's what Pla uh, uh planty said earlier um and i just i just uh i pinned that quote because it, it's true and it's something that we have to remember um, cause it's hard. People just, they try to hold whatever they can over you to, to just have some sort of power over you. And I don't know why people, there's a lot of people like this who, who want to manipulate other people or feel like they have some kind of power over other people, um, instead of opening up about what's going on with them. And I know that's what's going on with my mom. She has some trauma she hasn't dealt with. But instead of dealing with it, like, I was trying to think of my purpose the other day and what I wanted and what makes me happy. And, like, I really like helping others, but I don't know if that comes from me always putting my mom first and that always being my purpose or if it's something I really like. Because, like, of course I like making people happy, you know? I mean, who doesn't? But at the same time, like, now it makes me wonder. And that pisses me off, too, because it's like, how many facets of my life did my mom really have, you know, influence over? It's like everything. Like, how do I know that's me? Or how do I know if that's my mom? I know my anxiety comes from my mom, you know? Get that. Because, like, not, like, do... So, I'm a people pleaser. I'm mm -hmm. not by choice. Do, do I get enjoyment out of being there for people and supporting everybody and be, being there emotionally for somebody? To a point. Is it something that I was trained to do? Yes, because to this day, I'm the one that my mom calls when she's having issues with my dad. When she needs to vent about something, I'm the one she calls. It's not a choice that I have. It's something that I was programmed into since birth. Mm -hmm. But, like, if it's something that I can help with, I do enjoy being there for my friends and strangers even. But it's not something that I will, like, go out of my way to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't seek it out. If somebody messages me, I'm willing to be there. But it's not like, oh, how are you today? Do you need somebody to talk to? Like, I, that's, no. Yeah. That's, that's not me. me. That's, that's me. How I know it's right. that's it, to an extent, yeah. but it's not something that I enjoy doing because it's what I like to do. Yeah, um, I think that's me, um, really, to my own detriment, because since I was never made a priority, I don't know how to make myself a priority, and I put other people in front of me. Um, and I volunteer myself for a lot of stuff I don't have time for. <laughs> Which, you know, like, I really want to help people out, and I believe in them, but, like, you know, I realize, like, I have to believe in myself, too, and I have to invest in myself, too, even though, like, I was invested in my mom. I was invested in making her happy. Um, I was invested in carrying whatever weight she put on me, even though I didn't know it. Um, Mr. Beatdown says, I believe family is not blood, um, is not of blood, but of the heart, um, of the soul. Uh, blood family and I are not connected and don't get along that well but the family I made and, and those I'm close with uh, I've been to heck and back or hell and back <laughs> and um, they support me 
way more in my decisions um, as a person than my blood family do. And I feel that. Um, that was really beautifully said. Um, and I, I, I totally get that. Um, just like my whole mom's side of the family, they just couldn't even see that we were being abused. And then when I tried to tell them as an adult, they didn't want to listen. So like the her whole side fam of the family kind of dead to me, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, gang came through. Thanks for coming in, gang. Uh, Vinny, hey, how are you? Um, we're talking about narcissistic parents. And if you have any experience um, experiences that you want to talk about, um, please feel free to come through. It doesn't even have to be a narcissistic parent. It could be a narcissistic person that you know of um, who, who tries to take advantage of you. Like, now that, it, now, now that I actually sit back and think about it, because, like, you know, we're talking about it, and you're, like, saying that your mom has trauma of her own that she doesn't want to take care of. My grandma was born in 1917. Okay. She was... She wasn't raised by her biological parents. Yeah. It was tough times. So my grandma didn't really know how to be a mom. She did the best she could. Yeah. But she didn't know how to be a mom. Mm -hmm. Even though she birthed like nine children. Yeah. So she was, my grandma was born in 1970. My mom wasn't born till 1963. Okay. Wow. So she was 46, if I did the math right, <laughs> when she gave birth to my mom. So I hear the stories all the time. Oh, oh I had a time frame. Um, how long it would take me to walk to school and walk back. And if I was a minute late, my mom was already on her way to find me. She would grab me by my hair and drag me home. Oh, my God. It doesn't God. matter where I was. And, like... You were abused. Whether she loved you or not is not the question. You were abused, and you see nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So you think because you were slightly less abusive physically that you weren't just as abusive emotionally and mentally? You're wrong. And it's also very because wrong to invalidate your experience, you know, and how like, you feel and your emotions. In 2021, we decided that we wanted to leave the city. So we, we found a house. Mm -hmm. we, put a, we put a bid down. We got the house. To this day, he, till, he still tells me that we made the wrong choice, that we shouldn't have moved, that we were perfectly fine where we were. And the kids would have been, perf like, they would have been well taken care of. The kids are fine. Yeah. Like, I'm doing the best that I can. But I can't depend on somebody for the rest of my life who is not going to be there for the rest of my life. And the time that he is going to be there, she's going to keep up her bullshit. Yeah. Like, yeah. the only person that I need to depend on is the one that I am legally supposed to depend on, which is devil, my husband. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I expect my kids to depend on me to an extent because I'm trying to teach them what my mom didn't teach me. My dad taught me how to cook. Because he was tired of cooking when my mom didn't want to cook. Because that's a woman's job. Oh, God. He's one of and, those. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. And he taught me how to cook so that I could take over the cooking so that my mom could get a, a, a break. And my mom taught me how to do laundry so I can do their laundry. Mm. But she never taught me how to take care of bills. She never taught me how to file my taxes. She never taught me how to file, like, fill out a job application because she didn't want me to do any of it. She didn't want me to leave the house. Yeah, it was very hard to get out of my house, too. Um, it was more about just being very subservient. Um, I'm going to pick up on another subject in a second, probably birthdays, because I, I, I have a feeling, like... The birthdays probably collectively with everybody they were probably pretty horrible um, but mr. beatdown said I used to be like that I would help my family so much I lost more pieces of myself to the point I was uh, through a dark mindset for a long period of time and I've been there too um, 
you know, when I was growing up, when I was 16, um, by that time, I was carrying so much guilt and so much pressure from school. Like, I was going to a really hard school, and I was trying to perform well, but mentally, like, I just, I wasn't well, and I was dealing with a lot. Um, like, I tried to commit suicide, and, my like, I just, I, I just felt so bad about it, and my mom made me feel like I had the problem, like, um, it was my fault. Um, she didn't want to like figure out why or what was going on with me. It was just my fault. And I think on some level she knew that. You can get over it. You know, you just got to think positive. It's not something that I caused. Oh, she just, just used to say, to I'm not crazy. Like, me. she's not crazy, you know? Like, she just. She didn't really want to no, acknowledge there was a problem. Me. Huh? That's what my mom told me when yeah. I told her that I have suicidal tendencies and i think about it every day yeah and she's like just think positive and just you will eventually rewire your brain to thinking that you are perfectly fine yeah and that's that's not true <laughs> that's not yeah. true um you, you know as i process more about like stuff that happened to me and you know like where my guilt is coming from like when i tried to commit suicide when i was 16 that was because I didn't know how to cope with things. Like there was a lot of stuff put on me. And I, I, don't, I don't know if my mom like consciously knew what she was doing or not. It doesn't matter because you know, she did it. Um, but just having to deal with so much at a young age and having no outlet is a lot. Um, I, I forgot to talk about the charity that we're supporting today. Um, today we're raising money for Active Minds. I'll be uh, raising money for, for them the whole month. Uh, they, prov uh, they provide um, mental health uh, awareness, uh, education, and support to uh, 14 to 25 year olds, which is important to me because I feel like if I had some kind of safety net when I was 16, somebody to talk to about what I was going through, um, you know, maybe I wouldn't have taken that route. It just seemed like, you know, there was nothing else I could do. I wasn't good enough. I had all this guilt placed on me. Everything I did was never good enough. Um, you know, and that was just my anxiety talking to me. I've been living with anxiety for years and I didn't know, um, you know, until I had to open up to my husband about who I was inside, which is very, it was very scary to me because, you know, that voice that, that you talk to yourself with in your head, I never knew that that's something that you should expose to anybody. Um, I didn't think I'd ever have to. So, you know, um, when I met, like, after a while, I just, I needed to open up to my husband. Like it became necessary so that we could communicate with each other. And, you know, now that he knows what I'm going through and what I go through every day, especially with this like voice of anxiety, always judging me about what I do. Like he's, you know, he feels bad about it. And he's like, he's upset. My mom hurt me so much and just messed me up. Um, but yeah, I mean, do, do you have anything to say about that, uh, Ray? Like, there's no, there's no easy way for us to just, like, deal with it. Like, there, it's, it's heartbreaking because in a way, like, we deserve so much and we have gotten, like, yeah. the shit end of the stick 100% of the time. And we didn't ask for it. And when we, like decided we need an outlet the outlet we chose of even though it was not the right one we were to blame for it yeah like it's our fault we don't have any healthy coping mechanisms pick up a notebook write down your feelings like <laughs> it's not gonna work <laughs> obviously yeah because like the paper's not gonna give me any kind of good advice yeah. on how to deal with my teen and teen emotions plus the baggage that you're putting on me like I've never been 16 I don't know what the hell I'm doing on top of that you're throwing your ex age baggage onto me while I'm dealing with my own like how else do you expect me to cope like I used to lash out because I would get stuck in the house 
I would even asked, like, I didn't even ask to hang out with my friends. I'm like, can we go for a drive? And she's like, no. Do you have money for gas? No, I don't have a job. I'm not allowed to go work, remember? Wow. Oh, well, then go do chores. I have ADHD. I get zero, like, happiness from cleaning. Like, I don't want to do that. It's going to piss me off even more. And then I get an attitude, and then she slapped the attitude right off my face. And then I start crying, and I start cutting. Like... Yeah. There was, there's no easy way, like, for us to say, hey, I need to talk to you, Mom. Like, because as soon as you say, I need to talk to you, it's their problems that we're listening to and how they dealt with it and how they got over it, and you're no longer valid because it's about them. Or I have, a, like, we need to talk. We need to fix this. There is no problem. You, there's nothing wrong. Whatever you think is going on, it's all in your head. Like, yeah. there was never a heart-to-heart -heart because, according to her, there was never an issue big enough for us to sit down and actually talk about it. Yeah. And it wasn't until I was, like, seven, like, I was, like, 17. I had a meltdown, and I just threw everything in her face that happened to me growing up. That she, I couldn't even talk to her. And I was literally screaming off the top of my lungs so that she could hear it. All she did was, I took care of that. They're no longer allowed here. Like, yeah, yeah. That doesn't help me. Like, they moved. You didn't kick them out. They moved back to Puerto oh, Rico. Oh, I thought she could kick them out. No, they moved to Puerto Rico. Oh my god. Oh, that's she worse than I thought. She said they kicked them out. Um, I, I just wanted but to... But even then, even if she would have kicked them out, it wouldn't have fixed what it did to me, mentally. Like, there's no reason why a seven-year-old should have been put through that. Yeah. In her own house. I, I just, I don't... In front of everybody, and it was sneaky enough that nobody took notice. I mean, part of me thinks that she probably felt like it reflected badly on her, but in her mind, since she's a narcissist, she couldn't possibly be a bad mother. So, you know, you're just making stuff up. But like, I, I'm sorry. I just wanted to take a quick break. I, I don't mean to interrupt you. I wanted to thank K9 for the $5 donation. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you, Danny Mark, for uh, the follow. Um, if you have anything to say or add to the conversation, Please, uh, we'll, we'll be going throughout the chat every now and then, um, getting opinions and experiences and stuff like that. Uh, continue, Ray. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. Like, it's just one of those things where, like, I didn't have to scream as a soft-spoken person to get my point across. Like, if I have an issue, I want to say, hey, I have an issue. Mm -hmm. This is it. And then just be done with it. Yeah. Like... And that's one of the things that, like, it's affected my marriage because I don't, like, nine times out of the ten, things get blown up because I don't feel like I can talk about my feelings. Yeah. And it's not, that's not it at all because if I can talk to anybody about how I feel, it's to devil. Mm -hmm. And if I have an issue, I know he wants to resolve it just as badly as I do. Mm -hmm. But I'm programmed. To the point where, like, my voice doesn't matter. Like, I tr like, and I try to like change that, especially like with my kids. Like, if my kids have an issue, the first thing that comes out of my mouth is, "Talk to me, so I can fix it." I mean, even like, just validating how they issue, feel too is important. Yeah, and I tell like I, the words that don't come out of my mom's mouth is something that I tell my kids on a regular basis. I'm proud of you, and I love you. Mm -hmm. And, like, if my oldest has an issue, like, she's, like, she's about to be a teenager. She's getting, she's having emotions she's not used to. Like, I tell her all the time, I'm like, talk to me. If there's a problem, I'll fix it. If there's an issue with somebody at school, let me know. I'll take care of it. I'll call the school. And I'll have the I'll have them handle it because if something happens to you because of 
self-harm or because somebody has harmed you, I will burn that place down. Yeah. yeah. I will fight for my kids tooth and nail, not because they're my property, but because they're my kids. I chose to have them. They had no choice in being here. Mm -hmm. So if anybody needs to protect them and teach them, it's me. Yeah. And the last thing I want is for them to end up like me. Yeah. I've offered my oldest therapy. I'm like, do you need to go to therapy? She's like, not right now. I'll keep talking to you about it. And the fact that she says she's willing to just talk to me, like, speaks wonders because that means I'm not my mom. Mm -hmm. And it's the hardest thing to break out of when you've been programmed to be her shadow from day one. Yeah. Like, I was known as her tail. Yeah. And if my like if for some reason my mom went somewhere without me, the first thing that they asked her was, "Where's your tail?" Yeah. And like that's not fair. I don't identify as my mother. Mhm. Mm I don't identify as part of her. Yeah. Like, so the fact that like if you see one, you have to automatically assume that the other one's going to be there, is not right. And like that's something that I want. Like, I don't even come close to touching when it comes to my kids like if it's up to them to discover who they are and what they want to do who they want to like yeah. like completely up to them okay. like my oldest right now she's she likes girls she came she came out as a lesbian whatever love who you want to love love is love yeah eventually bring me home an adopted fur puppy because actual adoption is expensive if you can afford it cool bring me home a grandbaby yeah. Um. Then she's like, I'm a Therian, which is just a person who identifies, um, as like a fox or a dog or whatever. But mm -hmm. it's like they know they're human, but they have those tendencies. Yeah. Which whatever. I'm not gonna judge. Like, if you want to, if that's what you think, cool. Like, I'll yeah. support it. Yeah. If I would have told my mom that I was bi, she would have gotten out her holy like her anointed oil oh i would have got that too <laughs> started praying for me like yeah I oh if you too. don't if you don't change you're gonna go to hell blah 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 mm -hmm. blah like yeah. to this day she tries to use church and the word of god to put fear into me yeah and I no longer associate with the Christian re uh, religion because of that. Like, yeah. I got religious nightmares because of her. Yeah. I would go to church before school. I would go to church after school. I would go to church on Saturday. I would go to church on oh, Sundays. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I don't need that. Like, okay. I... I'm just going to hop back in the why chat. Why are you putting that on a child? Like... Yeah. Even to my kids, like, I don't talk, like, if my kids want to know about it, I'll tell them, but I don't force religion on my kids for that reason. Yeah, no, it's, like, it, yeah, no, I, I agree, because I, I did the whole Catholic school thing, like, I know exactly what you're talking about. It was just another way to make you feel I, guilty for not doing what somebody else wants you to do, and it's not like, you know, believe whatever you believe as long as it doesn't infringe on somebody else and who they are. That's where I kind of draw the line. Like, um, like, to this day, I still wake up because I have had such a terrifying religious nightmare that I'm trying to scream in my dream, and I wake up trying to scream in real life and nothing's mm, coming out. That's so scary. Like, it, it really is, to the point where, like, I'm shaking. I don't know what to do with myself. Yeah. And, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I can't really change that because it's already happened. It's already in, like engraved into me. And as soon as I try to change something, I end up sick because it's not in my mother's will. I guess if that's how you want to like say it, like yeah. it's not her decision to change, so I can't change it. And it sucks. Like it's brought up so many issues with devils and I because he's like I'm not doing this right now and my mom's like we got to do this we got to do this we got to do this and I end up overwhelmed and we end up having to give in because I get to the point where like I'm so overwhelmed that I can't function yeah 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've been to the point of shutting down because, like, it's hard to go against what you were programmed to do and what you want to do. And I, I, yeah, and like, I have a conflict with that. Um, but yeah. let me get to chat real quick. Um, there's some comments in here. Um, so uh, Kat said, I feel like all my closest friends have given me space to drop off the map without feeling as guilty. I need that because moments of focusing on myself are so important for integrating what I'm learning. But I never had that with my family because they guilt trip me for not being there constantly. I get that 100%, like 100%. That makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, the, the guilt thing, the, the manipulation with guilt is such a big thing. Um, and it, it, it's hard carrying that around because it's like they need you to carry stuff for them. And you're not going to be there for them to do that. So they make you feel bad about it. Um, and also, like, you, you do, sometimes you need time to process things. Like, you should always have, like, take time for you. And if you have people in your life that can't understand what your boundaries are and what's healthy for you, they're not really your friends. They're not on your side. And you don't need them in your life. Um, like, I just, I realized that I didn't have any boundaries and I didn't know how to create boundaries because my mom had no boundaries and she didn't let me make my own boundaries. So I never know, like I'm learning how to do it now. And it's so, it's so hard as an adult, something I should have learned as a child, you know? Um, but yeah, I agree with that. Let me, let me scroll down just a little bit more. I think there were a couple more comments down here. All you guys have some cute emojis, clears here. Hi, thank you so much for coming through. If you have, we're talking about narcissistic parents. If you have any experiences you want to talk about, um, please let us know. Um, Mr. Beatdown said that he refuses to be like uh, his dad. I don't like, didn't like the way he raised me. I felt like I was an option to care about. Um, in one conversation, me and him back had back in uh, 2016 to 2018 finally told me how he felt about me and it still haunts me to this day oh i'm sorry that's that's a tough I one feel it. yeah I, that's a tough one i feel it 100 percent. yeah like this man left like literally wherever he could leave me he would leave me and then on my 18th birthday flat out told me i like flat out yelled for everybody to hear that i wasn't his daughter so like i get it 100 percent. like yeah he can't deny me because Unfortunately, I have his attitude, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, that's just crazy. Yeah, and I think how do you, I, like, how do you deny a kid? Like yeah. they, it's not their fault. It, it's not, but they they just place. And I want to know why that happens. Like, why do they place all this blame on us when it's not our fault? You know, it's just. I he mean, was I mad guess... at my mom. Yeah, and at me, he yeah. was mad at my mom because he, she let me use the car. And then he was mad at me for using the car on my 18th birthday. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and birthdays. We were supposed to talk like, about birthdays. Yeah. It was the one time there actually did something that I wanted to do on my birthday. And it wasn't like I asked for money. I put my own gas in the car, in, in the van. I went and I picked up my friends. And it was not like I picked up a bunch of them. I picked up three people. And, like, we weren't driving around. I went, I picked them up, and then we were walking around. I just needed a car to drive them back home because none of them drove at the time. And, like, because he wanted to go out drinking with his buddies and drinking and driving, I'm no longer his daughter. Like, I was never his. I was some strange dudes from the bar, you know, like, my mom went to the bar at her at a younger age a handful of times and not while she was pregnant with, like not right before she was pregnant with me she dropped the bar scene after no right before she got pregnant with my older sister yeah like, yeah that's crazy I just... my mom has a lot and i mean a lot of flaws but one thing that i will give her is that she's always been faithful to my dad yeah Unlike my dad, who's cheated on my mom with anything that has legs and moves. Yeah. Um, it, it is hard being a child and watching relationships like that. Um, watching my parents grow up um, well, me, while I was growing up. Um, like, 
my dad, he, he's probably why I ended up so nice, I feel like, but he was also never really, he never stood up for himself, which, you know, it kind of reinforced that behavior of doing what my mom wanted and giving in to her and, you know, what she wanted and what she desired was more valuable than what I wanted and what I needed. So, like, she was always put first by, by my dad and, and, you know, by everybody um, in the family. So it, it's kind of interesting how, like, kids can pick up on those, like, um, nonverbal cues like that. Um, cause you know, the more I thought about it, I was like, you know, my dad never really stood up for himself or never really stood up, stood up for, um, you know, well, he, he did stand up for me and my, my sister a few times, but, um, you know, he, he was just, he was being abused so bad. He, I just, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Um, Pic Picnic says, I'm so sorry, Mr. Beatdown hugs. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, so I think we were going to talk about birthdays. Um, I do remember one birthday, uh, my 21st birthday. I wanted to go with the family to like this, uh, the seafood place in Boston when I used to live there. Uh, it was in this place, uh, this town called Revere. Um, they had just this like huge beach there. It's really beautiful. I, I remember growing up there and going, having trips there and stuff like that. Um, and they have like the seafood place that this has like fried seafood, you go there. And I thought it would be nice to spend the day with the family, hang out on the beach and stuff. Um, so we went, we got the food and my mom was like, oh, let's go back home. And I'm like, oh, but I wanted to spend the day here. And she didn't care. She couldn't care less about what I thought. And, you know, at that point, it, that was when I realized that like what I wanted didn't matter. And, you know, um, that what I, like my thoughts and emotions and feelings weren't important to her. Like there were many instances before that, but that's where, when it really hit home to me that, you know, somebody like that really takes your, your autonomy away. Like they take away what you want for yourself, your, your goals, your aspirations. Like they just, they just take, they just keep taking from you, you know? Um, I don't know. Like, do you have any birthday examples? Do you guys in the chat have any birthday examples? Yeah, besides, like, that 18th... Like, it's, like if it was a birthday, it wasn't my mom who screwed it up. It was usually my dad. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember when I was four. This is the earliest memory that I have birthday-wise. He decided that, oh, once we, like, we, we'll get her a cake, we can come back to the house. Um, and we'll celebrate at the house. We'll get, um, then we'll go down to my, to my mom's and she can ride one of the horses. And like, he, he had it all planned to the point where like, they got me a Pocahontas cake cause I loved Pocahontas at, at that age. Mm -hmm. He took the candle and popped it on her mouth. And because my dad smoked, so did Pocahontas. So no, that's not right. Apparently Pocahontas had a smoking problem. Yeah. And absolutely ruined the cake yeah and that started an argument because my mom had an issue with it and like yeah your dad sounds like point, he just yeah, wasn't me, like he, my dad has some like my dad is how old is he he's going on 67 in august wow and he has the mentality of a 16 year old it sounds like something's going on with him <laughs> Yeah. His his parents weren't there, like Yeah. Um from what I remember, like my grandma like his my grandma, um was just as manipulative as my mom. Mm -hmm. And just as money hungry. And like so but my her at that age, like he married my grandpa i think he was like 13. like she wasn't ready to be a mom yeah yeah like and so she wasn't like she raised the kids with no love no affection no discipline no no rules no respect so he thinks that's how it is and then my grandfather was like woman you belong in the kitchen and that's what my dad learned and that's what to this day like you're a woman, you belong in the house, you need to do the cleaning, you need to do the cooking, you need to take care of the kids. 
I'm like, no. Yeah, not not at all. And, <laughs> like, you live in the house, you clean. You live in the house and you know how to cook, you cook. Mm -hmm. Everybody puts in what they can. Like, I can't work because of my health. Mm -hmm. But devils can, even though he has back problems. We found him a job that's easier on his back and pays more. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's And, funny. like, he's working. He's leaving here at the ass crack of dawn and coming back earlier in the day, which is great because that means he's with us more than his old job. Yeah. Oh, that's but good. But if I need help, all I have to do is say, hey, can you do this? He might not get to it right away, but he will eventually do it. That's another thing is asking for help. But I want to get to Mr. Beatdown, what he said. He said, I don't think my family really did birthdays for me. I don't even remember having one. And I'm so used to that. I don't even celebrate my birthdays much now, which is really sad. When's your birthday? We're going to do something. We should have something on the channel for Mr. Beatdown's birthday. Um, because that's not right. You should be celebrated. Everybody should have a chance to celebrate their birthday because that's important. And I feel like it's important to celebrate the life and who you are and what you've learned up to this point in your life. You know, because you're just growing and you're getting better, hopefully, <laughs> you know. And I think that's one of the things that they, like, I don't celebrate holidays. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Like, I, I celebrate, like, birthdays to an extent, but I don't go, like, oh, it's your birthday, like, let's go all out. No, I don't do that. Like, you pick a day mm -hmm. on the weekend, yeah. close to your birthday, and we'll go get a meal. You You get to choose where we eat. You choose your cake. And whatever we can afford for your birthday presents is what you're getting. Mm -hmm. But obviously the birthday presents you're, you're going to get are something that you're going to like. Not whatever we want to get you, but what something that you're going to like. Yeah. If not, we will take you to go and pick out your birthday present. But on the day of, usually with my oldest, we just don't send her to school. She can take the day off. Yeah. Because um, her birthday is right by Halloween. And then my youngest doesn't have to go to school on his birthday because he was born during summer vacation yeah um so it's only fair that if one doesn't have to go to school the other one doesn't have to go to school so we just keep them home yeah but they get to choose what they want to do on their actual birthday like mm -hmm. where we eat what cake they get yeah. but presents you tell me when you want to get them and we will go and get them for you yeah like it's january your birthday's not till october let's wait a couple months it's in June, like, after we celebrate your birthday, your brother's birthday, you want to go and get yourself your birthday present now. Don't expect something later because we did it now. Yeah. But you're still going to go get your meal and you're still going to get your cake and we're still going to sing for you and take pictures. But I don't... Christmas? I give them their gifts whenever I get them. Yeah. And on actual Christmas Day, we just lounge around and go visit family. That sounds nice. But we don't actually celebrate it. We're usually just sitting on our phones, just letting the kids run around. Yeah. Um. But, like, I can't I can't deal with it. Like, it's too much planning. It's structure that I was not taught. So I don't know how to do it. Yeah. Like, planning a birthday party, I don't have the capability to actually plan it and go through with it. Yeah. I can tell you exactly what I want, but actually getting that into motion, mm -hmm. nope, not happening. Yeah. And I blame my parents for it because they never taught me how to do that because they never did it for us. Yeah. Well, if you ever need help, just let me know. I'll, I'll help you plan a birthday party. I'll look up stuff in oh, your I can area. <laughs> I can't actually get it going. Oh, okay. It's for getting the actual thing in motion that yeah. I, like, I don't know where to start. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can talk about it. But Mr. Beatdown said his birthday is March 18th, and we missed it. Um, and Picnic had a birthday in March 11th, so we missed you guys' birthday. But happy belated. If you want to do, like, a late birthday celebration, like, maybe we could have, like, a, a dual celebration. Do it on <laughs> maybe we can do something. Let me know if you guys want to do something for your birthdays. Um, but I love celebrating birthdays, so we'll do something. See, what you do is you get all the birthdays from January until June and celebrate them all in June and then from July to December and celebrate them all in December. That's a good idea because it, it would be hard to celebrate everybody's birthday, but it would be good, great to have like a fun celebration. We all come together and play something together and we just have a good time. Um, but I also wanted to speak about that. Like my dad made sure me and my sister had good birthdays, but 
when it was my mom's birthday, why did her birthday last for the whole month? Like, it started out like, oh, I'm going to have my birthday weekend. Then it was my birthday week. And then, like, the whole month of April, it's it's her birthday. She's celebrating her birthday. She's doing what she wants to do because, you know. And even when, like, I left my house around 26. You know, she still used to go out and party and stuff. So she she was just really into doing what she wanted, but not letting anybody else do what they wanted to do. And uh, it was so bad with isolation, isolation, like, you know, I was never able to contact my dad because um, I knew things at home were bad. Um, you know, my me and my exes used to joke about like how he had Stockholm syndrome, which I think he, he did. Like, I just I was playing around, but like, I think he did um, after a while because, you know, he would use the excuse for not leaving as me and my sister. But once we were gone, he was still there. And, like, we wanted him out of there because, like, it wasn't a good situation. Like, my mom would go to work with the house phone so he couldn't contact anybody, and I couldn't contact him. I bought him a cell phone. She took it, and she broke it. And, like, I didn't see any of that money. Like, she didn't she didn't pay for it. She didn't help. She just broke it, and then she was just like, I don't know where it is. And I'm like, well, if I could at least give it back to them, you know, I could get some money off of it. And she never gave it back to me. And she still, she has, like, no idea why, like, we don't get along. Like, it's, 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 she just did some kind of mental gymnastics to make it just my fault. That's how she gets over it. Like, she hasn't done anything. It's just, it's just, it's just my fault. I know that was a lot. <laughs> no, it, it, it's fine. And that's, that's kind of what we're, what we're here for is just to get it out. Yeah. And maybe somebody can relate. It, so far, it seems like there's people who do yeah but like see my mom didn't celebrate like she she reminded us all the way up to her birthday but she nobody she never said anything on the day of she wanted to see who remembered her birthday so that she could use it against them later for the ones who didn't oh oh when my mom would have some kind of information on you or like some kind of something she wanted to use for retaliation oh she she like, like nobody likes telling her anything because she's so good at that just oh, taking like, things oh, and using it against hey, you. Hey, Mom. Um, do you mind if I come over and grab a couple things I don't that I don't have at the house? Oh, but you forgot to call me on my birthday. You forgot to call me for Mother's Day. You didn't. You didn't bother calling me to wish me a happy anniversary. Like. Yeah. I called you on your birthday. You didn't answer. I sent you a text message. No, I got you a gift. Like, out of a, like, I'm the one that like I will break the bank, or I will figure out a way to get her something every time for every holiday that I possibly can, so that she can't hold it against me because she will. But that's besides the point, right? Like, like, like you. you she even if you got her, if you, even if you didn't get her anything, or you didn't call her on her birthday, she should still be there for you because you're her daughter. No, I have to, I have to give in order to receive. Oh, Kat, thank you so much for coming by. I hope you have a great day. Happy Thursday, and thank you, thank you so much for um, joining in on the conversation. <laughs> have a great day. Yeah, and like, like. Devil, Devil can vouch for me, and he's the one who actually brought it up about how mentally unstable and narcissistic she really is. Mm -hmm. Like, I should, I shouldn't have to ask and give in order to be like to receive something because I need it, not for me, but for the kids. It doesn't matter if it's the kids or you. I mean, and like. She got me to the point where, like, I don't like asking her, like, I don't like asking her for help. I don't have a great relationship with, with Devil's mom, mm -hmm. but I will rather go ask her than ask my own mom. Yeah. Hey, Knox, welcome like, in. Sorry. <laughs> hey, Knox. How are you? And, like, that's not, like, 
that's not something that like I find okay because this lady literally told me to abort my kid that it was okay. Oh. Like luckily she doesn't like she's changed and she absolutely loves her grandkids, but like I shouldn't have a better relationship with somebody like that than I do with my own mother. Like I shouldn't feel more comfortable asking a lady who literally dropped off the face of the earth for seven years. Yeah. And my own mother, who's been there for the last 32. Yeah. Uh, Knox says, hi, hey. Ray. And uh, that they're good. They're just at work. How are you? Uh, I'm healing, processing, <laughs> learning. Yeah, we all are. Um, there was something I wanted to talk no, to no, about no. you about with boundaries. I can't remember what it was, but... Um, oh, I have zero boundaries. Yeah. Except for don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't look at me. If I like, if I am in that mood where I don't want to be touched, don't even, don't even breathe on me because it, I will snap. Yeah. Like I don't like the dogs touching me. I don't like the cats touching me. The only ones that actually get a pass is the kids because it's not their fault. Mm -hmm. Like I don't like devils touching me, mm -hmm. and he knows because as soon as he does, I hug. Yeah. But like, it's like I, I get so angry and I don't know how to process it yeah like how, how does one like go about that where does that even come from yeah that's like, the thing I you need no to figure out on anything else yeah except for touching like I understand what I went through and that's probably part of it yeah but actually saying no don't touch me I can't say it I just huff and I get pissed off yeah sometimes when I'm touched I get a little irritated too like there's just sometimes I just yeah, like, I just yeah, but I I, I I totally understand what you mean. Um, Mr. Beatdown said my dad would literally go into full preaches about any time I would ask him uh, for to the point for I'm guessing for help to the point I would rather break the the skies before I ask him. And same with me, like I would never ask my my mom for help or my dad for help because you're just made to to feel like you're burdening somebody when you needed help you know you didn't want to bother like i never wanted to bother my dad because he was dealing with enough in my eyes and my mom like she was the priority so you just couldn't go to her and i i didn't really have anywhere to go to ask for help like we were so private and isolated um you know my dad's family we barely ever saw them um there was one time we saw them when i, I remember when i was 16 they took pictures of us to just prove that we existed you know my mom made sure to keep us away from them probably because she knew what she was doing wasn't right but you know um my dad's family thought he just didn't want anything to do with them but he was just in an abusive relationship and he could not get out like me and my sister had to physically remove him from the situation and it took a while for him to see that he was in an abusive relationship um and it, it's hard. It's hard watching somebody go through that. Um, it did help me I... recognize uh, 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 an abusive relationship I was about to get in um, because they did the same thing my mom did with my dad. Like, you know, they started trying to take my friends away, trying to take my family away, controlling my social media. And then, like, after a week, I was like, oh, oh, hell no. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Because I just saw how un unhappy it made my um, my uh, my dad, and like he wanted kids, and I'm like, I don't want to put kids through this, and you know, yeah. Uh, Vinny says hi, Rock, and I hope all is well with you, and the stream is going well. It is, and also hi, Ray. <laughs> uh, that's from Vinny. Hi, Vinny. Um, and Mr. Beatdown said, I thought that was just me. I don't like when people hug me. Um, I cringe or feel cla claustrophobic, like. Yeah, I, like sometimes, sometimes it's okay, but then sometimes, especially like when I'm processing things, I just, I don't know. There's something about it, like, I don't, I don't know what it is, and it could be because like my family wasn't like super like huggy and touchy and affectionate like that. Like we were just very isolated and just very on our own. Um, it feels like. No, we were forced. You were forced. Yeah. I mean, so, that makes sense, too. Spanish people, when we say hi, yeah. we hug, we give each other a kiss on the cheek, and, like, we talk. 
I don't like that. Mm-hmm. I hated it. Mm-hmm. But my mom, oh, so go say hi to your titi. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to. Yeah. Go say hi. That's your, that's your titi. You need to go and say hi to her. I don't want to. Yeah. And then, oh, go say hi to your own, your tío. I'm like, I don't want to. And then they give you a hug and a kiss. And then it's awkward and gross and you don't want to. And you're forced to. Or you make them look bad. Uh, or, like, you're a disrespectful child because you don't you don't want to do it. And then as, as I got older, it's just like, say hi, to, say hi to your dad's friend. Say hi to your mom's friend, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't want to. Like, yeah. And if you, like, let's say I'm upstairs with uh, nine times out of ten, I, nine times out of ten, I usually was when there was company. Mm-hmm. If I got thirsty or I got hungry and I needed to get something, the first thing I needed to do if there was company was acknowledge company. Mm-hmm. So I had to say hi to everybody, give them a hug and a kiss, and then I could leave. And then, on my, like, to go get my food. And as I walked through the room again, I had to say my goodbye, give them all a hug and a kiss again, and go back upstairs and pretend I didn't exist. Like, that's excessive. And, yeah. like, that's something I don't want to force on my kids either. Like, I'm at the point where, like, if you don't want to give hugs and kisses, don't. And I hate it because my mother-in-law is a hugger. Mm-hmm. And she kind of forces the kids to hug. And I'm, I'm about to just tell them, be like, hey, if the kids don't want to hug you, don't force them to. Because I don't want them to grow up hating to be affectionate. You know... My mom was actually really good about that. And part of me thinks it has to do with her trauma, Um, especially with like, um, my great aunt owned a triple decker in uh, Massachusetts. And we used to live on the second floor. My great uncle used to live on the top floor and my um, other great uncle and my great aunt used to live um, on the bottom floor. And um, She would always ask me like, oh, has he ever been weird with you? Has he touched you? Um, Do you feel weird when he like, like kisses you? Um, Do you not want him to touch you? So she told him like not to touch, touch me and my sister or not to give us hugs because it makes us uncomfortable. Like she just, she flat out went up and told him that. And like, she's never really defended us like that with anything else. And it makes me think like something must have happened to her. There's other stuff that I don't want to bring up now, too, that kind of support the idea that I think something traumatic happened to her, but she was never able to open up to anybody. And it, it's so sad because if she did, if she had something traumatic that she's been through that she needs to process, like, I would want to help her through it, you know? Like, I want her to, I want her to get better, you know? I want her to be able to live her life and treat people like they should be treated and you know, just, just grow as a person. And she's just, she's so scared. She just doesn't want to. And I feel like that's why she feels like she needs to control things. Yeah. Like it, it it's hard because like at that, like at her age, she's not going to admit it. She's not going to want to seek help. It yeah. Things are what they are. And there's, if she can't control it, she wants nothing to do with it. And most the same way, like, She's not going to admit that she is narcissistic, nor that she has bipolar disorder, and that nine times out of ten, I can tell her something, and then she just says that I didn't tell her. Yeah. Um, but, like, they're not going to seek help. They're going to say that everybody else is in the wrong. Like, she she calls me and complains, and we're on the phone for, like, 30, 40 minutes, her just complaining that my dad is bipolar and how he's doing this and how he's doing that. Like woman you're 61 your kids are all grown up and moved out you're raising my niece yes and I understand that but you don't need to be married to him Mm -hmm. if you are taking care of things the way that you say they are at this point he is codependent on you and you're codependent on him like yeah basically just admit it like you guys can't stand each other but you guys can't live without each other at this point either but like don't make it seem like he's the problem and for him not to make it seem like she's the problem because they're both the problem yeah yeah and don't call me to bitch and moan because it's no longer my problem it was never my problem because i never married any of them yeah Um, my relationship go ahead oh i was just gonna say uh said both my families are very affectionate 
all of them are big huggers, but they're good with boundaries. I think that's important too. Like as long as you're able to let people know what your boundaries are and they respect them, that's that's very important, you know? All right, sorry, Ray. <laughs> not like, if I could be adopted into any family, I would get adopted into Knox's family because from what I've heard, like, they're awesome. Oh, that's and, so like, awesome. And like he, like, he has the freedom to do what he wants without the backlash. Yeah. And I love that for him. Mm. And like... I'm I, like it's funny because his dad looks like my dad. Oh really? Like without him. the personality, and it's even more funny that Knox looks like looks like Devil. Oh, that's wild. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like it like his family does get-togethers. Like it, um, his he comes from a divorce family but like even as a divorced family like he turned out amazing like he's somebody that I can talk to about everything yeah. if I need to just like vent he like I'm just as close with him as I am with you like mm -hmm. but we we talk and like he tells me like oh I'm going to my uncle's for football like I don't trust my uncles as far as I can throw them. Yeah. Like, adopt me. <laughs> I need parental guidance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... But, yeah, Knox is, a, Knox is awesome. Like, him and his family. Like, he shows me blankets that his mom's made for him. Like, oh, that's I'm, so sweet. Like... Yeah, my mom awesome. barely cooked. My mom didn't really do any, like, anything, like, to really contribute to the house like she she worked but like i don't know she just you know we would decorate the christmas tree like me my sister my dad like we all ha we have all these memories like without her <laughs> which is probably a good thing but like she was just never she was never around like she was always off doing her own thing um which is great because like you know it gave us a little bit of space from her but when she wasn't she was just in full control over everybody and everything um, I don't know if I told you about, like, you know, when she gave me the talk, because she was the one who gave me the talk about being black and growing oh, up no. black. I want to hear this, because <laughs> I want to tell you mine. Oh, yeah, I want to hear yours, oh, too. God. Um, so what she said to me, she sat me down one day, I had to be, like, eight or nine. And then she was like, listen, we gotta talk. She's like, a lot of people aren't gonna like you. You've got two strikes against you. First of all, you're a woman. Second of all, you're black. And you're just going to have to deal with that. Then she got up and left. Th that was it. No, no, nothing on how to navigate it. Nothing on who I was as a person and being able to get through it. Just, just nothing like that. And I panicked for so long. I didn't want people to like not like me. Like, why were they not going to like me? Like, I didn't understand like at, at that point I didn't understand racism I was so isolated from everybody and everything it wasn't even like it wasn't something that was a reality in my life and it, it, it traumatized me because I was just I was so scared that people weren't gonna like me like that's when I had problems with saying no and like making boundaries like that's one of the instances where um, like I just I, I just stopped you know like I didn't even really stand up for myself at that point, but like, I just thought I was supposed to be as nice as I could be. Cause my dad was the same way. Like he was as nice as he could be. And, you know, um, part of me thinks like, you know, he didn't want people to see him as a threat. So he would be as nice as he could possibly be. But um, he was always nice to a fault. And I think that's where I got some of that from. Um, but yeah, it was, it was hard. And I've always had trouble with my identity. like. I was never able to like go outside and play with the kids in the neighborhood. My mom was just always like, oh, those are bad kids. And I'm just like, why? You know, why are they bad? Like, she just didn't want me to socialize. Um, at school, I had a bully too. I had a bully in second grade. I know I posted my picture in some people's Discord about, you know, my, my school pic of when I was in second grade. And I was like, oh, my bully was like three people behind me. <laughs> and, um, you know, like, 
so I had to isolate myself at school too because I just didn't trust people and I still have trust issues that I'm working on um, but it, it's a lot better now but just like I just I, I just wasn't around people because you know my, my mom isolated me at home and at school I isolated myself because I was being made fun of so yeah all that stuff but yeah tell me tell me about your story <laughs> oh my oh so the day that we had the talk mm-hmm. um I was like I was like six yeah um she sat me down that's pretty young yeah well I had older siblings mind you like my oldest sibling is like 12 years older than me like he's 44 oh, I'm wow. 32 oh, okay that's yeah that's an age gap but like yeah and then my oldest like that's my oldest brother then it's 42 so it's 44 40 going on no yeah going on 43 going on 42 my sister just turned 40 my brother's turning 39 my sister's turning 36 like i'm the youngest like by the time that they were hitting puberty like it was about time to have that talk so that i wouldn't feel left out oh, okay so she sat you so, down all together no she sat me down oh, okay and she grabbed the paper she grabbed the pen and she started doodling pictures of the wood like the female reproductive system the male reproductive system and how the baby like is formed and what happens when the male reproductive system goes in the female reproductive system and how it's 30 seconds of disappointment that can last you a lifetime <laughs> she said that oh yeah. my god wow wow Jesus. <laughs> oh my god. That's like that's 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 the most horrible talk I've ever heard of. That's that's pretty bad. Wow. And the picture that he fucking drew, like, why? Like I'm six just say hey. Six is way too young. It's, like, when a boy likes a girl, they eventually get feelings like weird feelings. And they do things with those weird feelings, and then a baby comes. And guess what happens when you have a baby? You're responsible for them for life. Like, I like I remember when I had the talk with Vi uh, with Violet Jellyfish, because she asked, he's like, where do babies come from? And we just try to make a joke out of it because we thought she was still too young. Mm -hmm. So we were just like, a boy has a snake, a woman has a den. And then the snake goes in the den, and it goes in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. <laughs> then it gets really sick and throws up. And that's how babies form. <laughs> I mean, that's a cute way to tell it. I mean, less, way less traumatizing. <laughs> yeah, Nox says that sounds traumatizing. Like, go into detail with a seven-year-old about how babies formed and, like, how disappointing, according to my mom, it is. Like, damn, like, yeah, right. I don't need her to actually have that kind of issue and like now she's older like i was able to sit down with her and have that talk and she's like don't worry mom i like girls i'm like <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um i remember that talk with my mom too i can't remember quite what she said i know she emphasized about how painful everything was the sex was painful that having a baby's painful periods are painful and like I was so scared by it, like, I was crying, but she went and told my aunt and my cousin, and they were laughing that I was crying, and then she came back and told me that she told them, and that they were laughing at me. So, like, that just e even made me, like, not want to be around people even more. <laughs> um, and I was socially awkward for a long time after, like, just even after leaving home because I just I didn't know how to process people I just didn't know how to trust people like it was stupid um Knox said that they never had the talk with either of their parents oh geez I mean I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing um I think it's good that they teach it in schools 
I think it's good that they teach us in schools because, you know, some parents have their own take on things and they might not be quite right. Um, but yeah, uh, Planty and said the, what the oh, actual... The top, like, oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Planty said uh, what the actual at six... You teach bodily autonomy and proper names for anatomy, not this bull. Uh, that's that's true. You you, you shouldn't. I I think six is way too young, like to un, like fully understand what's going on. Um, but I like the story you made up for for jellyfish. I think um, that was a, a good idea to like explain things on like kind of like a child le level, you know. Um, yeah, Nox says that's so messed up. Sorry to hear. Yeah, it was kind of messed up. Um, I, I don't know why she felt the the need to. Like, I guess I guess it's another way to manipulate somebody is making them like to devalue how they feel and how like their emotions. Um, like I remember the first like time I got a period. It was like in the middle of the night, and I had to go to my mom and tell her about it. And I I kind of didn't want her to know. Um, cause after that point, she started bringing me to the doctor and she was really, um, she was really scared that I was going to get pregnant, even though she like controlled every facet of my life. There was n at no point where I could have like gone off by myself and did anything cause I didn't have that freedom. Um, like my body was her property pretty much. And that's how she treated me. Uh, I just... You know, I went to Catholic schools. Um, the f like I, I've been to like three high schools, uh, Catholic high schools, and the first two they were just um, they're all girls, um, and the last one was like co-ed. But you know, um, my dad will always pick us up and drop us off, and I I, I think that was partly because my mom wanted us to. He worked at night too. Um, he was always tired. He still works at night. He works nine to five, but at night, like, <laughs> bless his heart. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, she's always had this weird stuff around, like, sex and reproduction. And, like, it just makes me think that, like, something, something happened to her that she can't talk about. And it, it makes me feel sad because, like, she would have my full support. And that's what makes it so hard to move on from her, because I, I want to help her, like, I'm willing to help her. Her family would be there for her, like, my sister would be there for her, my dad would be there for her, I would be there for her if she was willing to open up and tell us what's wrong instead of taking, she just took it out on us for, like, basically all of our lives, like, while we were living there. She just took it out on everybody else, whatever happened to her, and she wasn't able to talk about. Yeah, like, I'm I have this open door communication with my kids. Like I'm going, I'm going to be as open and honest with you as, as I can be so that you can be as open and honest with me as you can be mm -hmm. because communication works both ways. Mm -hmm. And I had this conversation with Violet last night about trust and how I have like really bad social anxiety because I, I just don't trust people. Yeah. And she, I, she's like, well, like, you, like you don't trust like um you don't you don't trust like your best friend like to hold your bag while you go on a ride i'm like i don't trust the atm machine to give me my money <laughs> I, have to well, I don't either like <laughs> i don't i don't either i, I don't think there's nothing have, anything wrong with that but like i don't expect to have my personal belonging held by somebody who I call a friend who could be my friend today and my worst enemy in a couple hours. Like, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Like, I brought a bag. I'm responsible for it. Or if I absolutely need somebody to hold it, 99% of the time, devil is with me and I say, here, hold this for me for a second. Yeah. And then I take it right back. Yeah. Like, I brought it, it's my responsibility to take care of it. And, like, that's something that I I tell her. I'm just like, you bring something. You're responsible to carry it because they're your friends now. That doesn't mean they're not going to go through your stuff. Grab your phone. Grab whatever money you brought. Take your whatever clothing, extra clothing you brought and just throw it. Like, you don't know them and you don't know their intention. Just because they say they're your friends now 
doesn't mean that that's how they are because you have come home and told me that they're picking on you because of you being your personality being a little bit different because of you liking to do quadrobics or you liking or you being a therian like they have picked on you they have given me a reason to not trust them yeah. especially with your stuff yeah that's a bit different and if they're picking on her it kind of like dawned on her that like maybe like my mom has a point in this he's not just crazy like i have i'm crazy to a point like yeah i know i have lots of issues that i need to work with but i'm not going to put my daughter and her items and her physical well-being and mental well-being at risk because of somebody else who doesn't know how to deal with their stuff or their parents aren't taking the time to work through their issues with the with the child and I flat out told her, I was like, I don't want you being friends with this kid because if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be doing the things that you're doing now. Yeah. It wasn't until this kid came into your life that you started doing this, this, and this, that. Yeah. I Like, have I talked crap about any other friends that you tell me about? She's like, no, not unless I've told you something bad, like that they did something bad to me. I'm like, exactly. And those are the people I don't want you talking to because you are a princess and you deserve to be treated like a princess like yeah. anything lower than that they don't deserve your time yeah no i agree 100 percent. and good on you for you know and 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 ensuring that she knows her self-worth you know because it, it sounds like you didn't have that i didn't have that either and the thing is like i was body shamed from the moment i got sick to the moment that i lost the weight and i was lost the weight they still body shamed me for being too skinny yeah, yeah. I mean, that's crazy. That's and wild to me. I I started gaining a little bit. I started gaining a little bit of weight back, so I didn't look so sickly. And my dad points it out. Yeah. I'm like, just just leave it alone, yeah. dude. Like you're you're no model. Like, I mean, the goal that they even want to comment, have any kind of comment, like they have any say over your body, is just it's it's over the line anyway. I'm like. I I hit 200 pounds at the age of, like, 16. Yeah. Oh, and I was there, too. <laughs> it, wasn't because, it wasn't because I was overeating. It was because I was at the point where, like, I had really bad uh, hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. And the medication that they gave me wasn't stabilizing it enough so I can consume my daily calories and not gain the weight. I would look at food and... Yeah. And by the time that I, I think my, I, I developed my first eating disorder in middle school, yeah. I would starve myself all day. Oh, wow. I would, all, I would go throughout my day with a, a lemonade tea and that I, that I wouldn't have breakfast. I would have my lemonade tea at lunch and I would make that last me the rest of the day. That's... And I would get home. Wow. My blood sugar was so low that I would get home and pass out. And I wouldn't wake up till the next morning. And nobody thought anything of it. That's crazy. I think I had an yeah, eating I... disorder the opposite way. But I'll, I'll let you finish. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I honest to God did that for like four months. Yeah. So my mom's like, you need to stop losing weight. We can't afford to get you new clothes every week. What? Oh, that was their reason behind you. Not that's yeah. that's terrible. That's it, so not bad. Not because I, I was not because I was starving myself. They thought I was eating perfectly fine. Yeah. Because the days that I was home, Saturday and Sunday, I'd wake up, I'd make myself a small egg sandwich, and then I'd go back to bed and I'd just sleep the rest of the weekend. Yeah. Because I got to the point where I was so bored that I'd get so angry and just pass out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I definitely used food for coping. Um, that, and along with video games, um, we'll be talking about that later today in uh, the second stream uh, that I have going on today. It's going to be video game therapy uh, today at 3 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Um, wait, 3, 6 p.m. Eastern <laughs> and uh, 3 p.m. Pacific. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I didn't get the video game therapy, though. Like, I didn't own my... A console 
until I was 18 and I bought it myself. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where I'd be my, if I didn't have video games to deal with what, what was going on. I just, like, I, I don't he know. Had, he had the, uh, the NES and then he had the SNES. Then he had a PlayStation. He had a PlayStation 2. Is this your dad? And my brother. Your brother? Oh, your brother, you know, really? The only boy that my mom gave birth to. Wow. So they the treated him a lot different, it sounds recently. like. Oh, my mom did, for yeah. sure. My dad only had boys, except for um, my sister and I. Um, so my dad had three boys from his first relationship. My mom had my sister, my oldest sister and my brother. Mm-hmm. Then they got together, and then they had my sister and I. Then my dad cheated and had my little brother. So besides, so out of his six biological kids, only two of us are girls. Okay. My dad always chose my sister. That's his favorite. That's his golden child. Yeah. My mom always chose my brother for like as her favorite. And I was her emotional dumpster. <sighs> yeah. I know what that's so, like. like. Dude. She didn't talk to me or she didn't do anything fancy for me unless she needed something for me. Oh, Hi. Got it. It's the class. It was me. Oh. Um, but, like, I didn't get my first phone until I was 14, and I had it for a month because my best friend, the one that I was telling you about earlier, mm -hmm. her aunt bought me a plane ticket to go to Vegas for a month. Oh, wow. Without my mom's consent, and it was non-refundable. And my mom wasn't like, didn't have the funds to repay her, so she had to tip me off. Oh, wow. Oh, that must have been nice to, like, yeah, get out of that uh, environment for a little bit. No? No? I got so sick. Oh. I got, oh, my God. Oh, yeah, because so he, night, oh, like, yeah, I that's right. I was running fevers. I was calling home. Are you okay? Is everybody at home okay? I'm panicking. Like, oh my God. I was miserable. Like, it, it was bad. Wow. And it wasn't until, like, I was just like, you know what, we're, we're leaving. Like, I'm, we're buying a house, we're moving out, like, I'm done. Like, yeah. I need to cut off some of this. Yeah. Yeah, she that really I made you to totally to dependent. And it, that wasn't until 2021, 20, like, July of 21, that we moved an hour away. And even then, I still have to call her, like, three to four times a week, sometimes three to four times a day. Wow. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I really hope yeah. you can, like, break that off one day because it's just, it, it's it's not good for you, especially, like, with all the stuff they did to you, you know? I just feel yeah. like it doesn't and help you I, The thing is, like, on. I know what they did. Yeah. And I know that they did me wrong. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to cut off communication, but it's always backfired on me. Yeah. And then when I try to, like, oh, you haven't called me in, like, three days. Where have you been? I'm just like, I've been sick. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I have to call her because if I don't, even if I'm dealing with my own, like, mental health, physical health, dealing with kids' issues, or just the household in general, I don't call her for a couple of days. She calls me. And then she has me on the phone for hours. Yeah, to catch I mean, me up on the couple days that I've missed, and how frustrated she is, and how abused she is. Yeah, like, I mean, she she obviously doesn't value your time and what you're doing. And if you can try to like cut down on, because you got other things to do, you don't need to be listening to all that, you know. Like I don't, no kid, no matter the age, could be the emotional dumpster for their parents to trash talk their other parents, whether they're married or not. Like th your child shouldn't have to pick a parent unless like one of them has made it a statement that they want nothing to do with that kid. Like there should be no picking, like don't put your child in the middle of the war zone. That's not their choice. That's not their responsibility. That remi like, yeah, that reminds me of something that happened to me. I can't remember how old I was. I was like maybe six or seven. My mom was like, 
you know, keep an eye on your dad, make sure he's like not seeing anybody else. Like you don't want a stepmom because like a stepmom's going to be mean to you. You're not the real kid. Like, I, 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 like, <laughs> you know, and I, at the time I was thinking, I was like, I kind of hope he does find somebody else. <laughs> I kind of, I can, like, it, I, I was like, I, I doubt that I could have a worse stepmother than she is a mother to me. Like, I, I, I was kind of like hoping for it. I was like, you know, I, I grew up and I was just like, you know, I always wish they got divorced. Like, I just, you know, my dad was so miserable. He was so unhappy and he didn't deserve it. Like, he just, you know, I mean, the difference was like, I didn't have a choice. I had to be there. He, he, he did have a choice. But um, I guess when you're in an abusive relationship, you don't feel like you have a choice. Um, but we're, like, we're having, oh, sorry, go ahead. And like, having a step parent isn't a bad thing. Like, my dad is my mom's oldest oldest two kids stepdad my mom is my dad's oldest three and his youngest child's Mm -hmm. stepmom like they're step parents whether they want to see it or not Mm -hmm. they don't see their kids as like oh these aren't my kids like i'm gonna have an issue with them well my mom does to an extent but my dad doesn't Mm -hmm. like that's one thing that i'll give him like he might have been a crappy dad Mm -hmm. but if i like if i need something i would rather go to my dad than my mom Mm mm-hmm yeah. But, like, Devils isn't my youngest child's biological dad, but if you ask my child, if you ask Jason, who's your dad? Devils is his dad. Mm-hmm. Like, his biological dad flat out said he wants nothing to do with him. Like, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I have somebody who does. Like, somebody who loves you just as much as he values his own biological daughter. Yeah. Puts no difference. Like, yeah, that's great. That's... That is what a parent love is it's unconditional no matter who's like yeah I remember when we were starting to co-parent and before we got together we were just getting to know each other again and he's like why don't we bring Jason like why do we always leave him behind and we started bringing him with and all of a sudden both the kids are calling him daddy mm. like yeah, okay that's, that's cool so sweet. makes it easier for us like the kids like the kids made the choice to call him daddy i didn't force violet to call ryan daddy like well that's not that wasn't in me like it was her choice whether she wanted to or not yeah all right and oh sorry they made the choice and that oh go ahead oh no no you 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 can finish up i'm sorry and that like when a kid chooses you Mm. like there's no greater feeling than like you should be proud like they chose to call you their parent you chose to be there but the child doesn't get that choice Mm. they chose to claim you yeah and i don't think there could be anything better than that if you get that choice yeah all right i know there's an ad break right now um we're coming to the top of the hour and we'll probably raid out soon Um, but I did want to talk about a few things. Um, I know I wanted to talk about what I've been going through since last Friday a little bit because um, I just wanted to let everybody know um, I've been having like a really kind of a rough time and I just wanted to explain why. Um, Also, I wanted to talk about the other stream that's coming up today and the the rest of the streams that are going on throughout the month. Um, I know you need to leave and start taking care of your kids, so I don't want to be... uh, too much longer um but i'm just gonna wait until the break is over so um actually got a comment from mr beatdown too um and clea came by so thank you so much for being here clea i'm doing a stream with her on the 17th uh we're gonna like i'll be giving her an interview and we'll be talking about some mental health stuff and maybe mental health in the fgc and stuff like that So I think that'll be really cool. I'm really excited about that. Um, I don't know if the ad break is over yet. If it is, please let me know. It is. It is? Okay. All right. So let me um, start talking about that stuff now. Let me mention what Mr. Beatdown said first. Um, He said, trust me, that was a hard point for me too, because my dad knows I'm not very big on everyday communication. So now he'll send me a gospel or church-related videos to me every day, but won't actually talk to me 
unless one to three times a month and it's always about what he's doing and the events and parting parties he's going to that's really sad i'm really sorry um that's hard too because my mom is like that i think you know i would I, like before i like i really truly cut her off i i tried reaching out to her a couple more times and you know i kept saying i know something's going on with you like you you, you should be able to confide in me and I, I i don't think she was able to because the way with the way she is she's she she takes information and weaponizes it and she probably thinks that's what everybody's going to do with information that she gives out about herself and i'm I, like it's sad that she feels that way because like i really truly want to help her and i want to help her get better but um she just she 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 has trust is trust issues too and she just she doesn't trust me to take whatever she has and help her through it which is really sad but um you know everything gets thrown back to the bible like you know it's like the devil made me do it and you know um, devil's my enemy and all this other stuff and I just I hate when people use religion as an excuse because it's not an excuse it's it's not an excuse um, but anyway let me talk about the events we have coming up and then um, I think we're gonna raid out um, oh now let me tell you what's been going on me, with me really quickly so I, I started therapy probably like the end of last year um, and I had a therapist appointment on Friday. Um, so we were talking about, you know, like it, it really started, um, like I really started realizing like how my mom and my aunt have been using me. Um, I, I was talking to my therapist. Um, I know some of you were in here for that stream, but I, uh, you know, I kind of broke down. I was working out and then all of a sudden, like I had this thought you know, my grandmother's, like, get her getting sick wasn't my fault. My aunt blamed me for not being around for my grandma and not helping, but that was her guilt um, because she wasn't around and she felt guilty about it. So she put that on me and I carried it all the way to, like, last month when I broke down on stream because I was holding that guilt for so long and then to realize that it wasn't my fault and to realize that I carried it for so long it it was it was hard it was hard to realize that and realize like how like after that like I just kept coming up with example after example of how I was being used like like I was just born to be their their like emotional and mental like pack mule to just carry these things around with me um because I had no aspirations of my own that's just what I was there to do just make them happy and make them comfortable to live with themselves so um all of that guilt like turned into anger and um that's what i've been dealing with is trying to let that anger go because i know no matter what i do no matter what i say to them they'll never listen they'll never be willing to like look within themselves and change things or apologize for what they did to me and and in their eyes i'll always be in the wrong which is it's hard because, you know, I look back at the things that happen and I used like, we talked about this, the, like in the other stream, right? Like our, about our inner child, like my inner child, I was so mad at her for so long and I didn't know why. And I just, I realized I was mad at her cause she couldn't stand up for herself. And now I'm ready to stand up for myself, but I can't, like, I just don't get that chance. And it, it sucks that have people think something is, is, is wrong about you and not being able to fix it. And so it's like, how do I get past that? And that's what I'm working on now. Cause like, I'm just, I'm so angry that I will, I'll never have that chance. You know, I'll never be able to fix it. And in their eyes, I'll always be in the wrong so that they can live with themselves. It's, it's kind of like, they, they just, they just took that from me. They took my ability like, I don't mind if people want me to help them carry a weight, but if you take that choice away from me, that's when I mind. That's when it upsets me. Um, so, like, the only way I can really see that I can get past it is, is that, you know, they're dead to me. I can just look towards my future, look at my accomplishments, and let them fade into the past, realize that they can't hurt me anymore, and just move on. 
but it sucks that I never, I'll never get to stand up for my inner child who went through so much and that, you know, I just, I just, I gotta be okay with it. There's nothing I can do about it. And it just feels like, you know, they get, they get one more thing on me, you know, I can't, I can't do anything about it. I, you know, and I, mm-hmm. I, and I hate that. I hate that, but that's just where we are right now. Um, but yeah, so that's what I've been going through. Um, but uh, yeah, it's about time to get going. I, I know some people said some stuff. We'll read that. I'll tell you about the next upcoming streams and we'll get out of here. <laughs> um, but thank you so much, Ray, for being here. And also, let me give you a shout out. Please make sure you follow Ray. She's such a sweetheart. She has a sweet family. And, you know, she's been such a great friend to me since, you know, like, like she, since she started streaming and getting involved with Twitch and stuff. Um, and it's been great watching my her grow. My family means my husband and my kids, not the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, her family is great. Her, yeah, her, her immediate family. <laughs> um, let's see. Let me read the rest of these. Uh, Clea says it's important to do mental health awareness. I, I think I'm going to have mental health streams regularly. Because I think it's important for everybody to be able to get stuff off of their chest. Oh, Prince of Darkness, hey, how are you? I'm sorry, I didn't see you come in. Let me give you a quick shout out. Um, I did, I think. What's up? I think I did give him a a shout out. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah, you did. Oh, I just saw that. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Mr. Beatdown said, even even today I had a huge debate argument about religion with my dad. After getting so many religious videos from him, I finally snapped and debated him on religion and how we as people should respect others' choices and their beliefs and religion. Oh, they'll, they'll never listen, though. I mean, the religion, the whole religion thing is just a cover to let them do what they want to do. Um, it has nothing to do... Because you can find pretty much anything to support anything in the Bible, and what you choose to use... I just feel like people weaponize the Bible, and that's what your dad is doing to you, and that's not right. <laughs> um... And there's a trend so far, like, my mom, your mom, uh, Mr. Beatdown's dad, like, they're all religious, and they're all narcissists. Yeah, yeah. It, it's crazy Most how that's, narcissistic like... Narcissistic parents are religious. It's it's just another way to, like, to, to kind of deflect away from them onto something else, I think. Another like, way to, like, not take responsibility. I go to church, responsibility. I read the Bible, I'm a good person. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. You're a complete psychopath. The, the people who like brag about going to church all the time, and then as soon as they get out of the church, they're just hurting people. You know, um, not. I mean, there are p- good people who go to church too, but there's a lot of people who just use use that as an excuse to be the way they are. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm just going off narcissistic parents, not not off like all churchgoers, because I have. Mm-hmm. friends who are amazing yeah, that yeah, are yeah. religious and they're great mm-hmm. and but most narcissistic parents are religious yeah <laughs> yeah Clea says i'm so glad you realized it wasn't your fault i'm glad you are with a therapist who's working through it yeah i mean going to therapy is really hard like you think at first you just think it's about like you know just talking about you know what's going on but you you really start to analyze you know things that happened to you and things that became traumatic like there's issues i didn't even know things that happened that i didn't even know were were like were affecting me um i didn't know where my anxiety was coming from that was a big one that was a big breakthrough for me is finding out my anxiety is because it's me checking to make sure i'm not my mom so it's me constantly questioning myself oh was i nice to this person when this happened, did I did I answer everybody in chat? Was I did I say anything to offend anybody? Like it just does that over and over with everything all the time, and it's it's so exhausting. Like I I just get tired of it. Um, but it's me constantly checking to make sure I'm not my mom. Like you know, that's another thing that she she uh, she has over me, and I, I just hate it. I hate it that every facet of like who I became was because of her. You know. Uh, Vinny, welcome back. We're, we're about to raid out soon, but uh, I'm glad you got back nice and safe and sound. 
Uh, Mr. Beatdown said, I left Christianity a while now, I, um, how I felt practicing it and the people of it and their double standards. Yeah, I get that. After telling him uh, what I practice now, he basically, uh, uh, he basically told uh, me I was wrong and his religion is right and the only one. So I expect he won't talk to me for a while. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you're probably better off anyway. Um, but I'm, I'm really sorry that you had somebody in your family like that and just, who just disregards um, and invalidates how you feel because there's nothing worse than that to me. Um, is everybody has a right to feel how they feel, you know, and you can't change how somebody's going to react to how you feel, but they should at least let you feel heard, especially if they care about you. Um, Plenty said, you guys, you girls are powerful. <laughs> um, every day you choose to keep going and are helping others, even though you don't truly realizing, you realize it. Thanks for sharing your story. Oh, I have to. Like, I mean, <laughs> it feels like there has to be a reason why I went through all of this. And if I can help somebody get through you know, something like this and help them to open up and be vulnerable. Cause it, it's hard. It's hard. And I, I commend Ray for being here. She's been through so much, you know, and she has kids. Like I'm not, I'm not strong enough to have kids. Like <laughs> I don't want to put them through any of my stuff, you know? Um, and Ray is working so hard to make sure what happened to her doesn't happen to her kids. And, and that must, it must be hard, you know? It's, it's not easy. Cause I, like I said, like I said it earlier, I deal with suicidal thoughts on a daily basis. And if it wasn't for my kids, I'm 99% sure I wouldn't be here. Yeah. But if I'm going to be, I want to make sure that I am setting them up for success mm -hmm. and to not be dependent on me. Like, I have started teaching Violet how to cook. Mm -hmm. My little man is dependent but i'm trying to teach him how to be independent mm -hmm. um but like there's an extent to the age and how much they can do on their own and and all that and it's it's hard balancing it out especially with them being extremely different mm -hmm. but like i don't want my self-hatred to affect them yeah because i was raised to feel like garbage and be garbage for all of eternity i mean and... I, I hope you can get out of that mindset right because you mean so much to so many people and you're valuable no matter what your parents say you know and i'm, I'm definitely trying like i need to learn my self-worth and understand that every time that i'm having one of these thoughts like I am enough. You I are. do enough. You are. And I might not be a great parent, but I'm a decent parent. And that should be good enough. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, yeah. but I'm trying. It's it's really hard and, to... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> and honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that my kids tell me... And I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating. If they don't tell me 50 times a day that they love me... Like, I did something wrong that day because it comes from them. Like, I don't ask them to tell me they love me. They do it on their own. They're just, they just randomly come in here, knock on the door, or just randomly walk in my room. Mommy, I'm like, yeah, I love you. I love Aww, you too. So do you need sweet. anything? No, I just want to tell you I love you. I'm like, Aww. oh, I'm doing something, right? <laughs> yeah, that's so sweet. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know how to help you in that way. I think you, you're going to have to find it yourself, but it's hard to like not let your parents what they, your parents say have so much weight over you you know it took me a long time to like just accept my mom is who she was and you know um i tied my happiness a lot to success and that's something i have to get over too because if i'm not successful at something i don't find happiness in it and it causes me to like stop doing a lot of the stuff I like to do because I'm not successful at it and those things should never be tied together um so that's another thing I'm working on but um I know uh we gotta get going AKL Alien thank you so much for coming through we're just about to end and raid out um 
Nox says, I'm definitely not going to have kids. Mine's our cats. Yeah, I feel that. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with having kids. It's, it's, it, it is hard if you realize you have some damage that was done to you by your parents and not to pass that on if you're, if you're not really conscious of it and you're not actively trying. But some, some people do try too hard and end up having the opposite effect. Like there was this Reddit post the other day that I read where this mom was forced, like when she was growing up, to have like these short, short haircuts. And so she forced her daughter to like never cut her hair. Her hair was so long, you know, she would get a little trim, but you know, when she got her hair cut, her, her own haircut, the daughter, her mom wanted nothing to do with her because, and she was so mad. She didn't compliment her. She didn't like, even though that was the daughter's choice, she just invalidated her feelings because she was so caught up in how she felt about what was done to her. And that should never be the case. Like, you should never put your trauma on your children, you know? And I know I have a lot to work mm -hmm. through. Um, I don't think I would have wanted kids anyway, but like that was one of my biggest fears is to put all this stuff that I did. I, like, I don't even think my mom knew what she was doing, but she, she did it. You know, I don't, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to force people into something because I don't know what I'm doing, you know? <laughs> Uh, Clea right, says, you are enough and the world needs your light. And she's right. She is really right. 100%. Thank you. I, <laughs> I appreciate that. Because sometimes that's how, like my name says, I'm a ray of sunshine. Because you are. with everything that I've been through, I stay pretty damn positive. Yeah. Um, AK Alien says, after having kids myself, I understand the fear. Um, and Vinny wants to talk to me after stream. Of course, that's fine, Vinny. Um, all right. So I'm going to tell you about the upcoming streams. I feel like this is, I think, Ray, this is the only stream we're doing together for Mental Health Array, uh, Awareness Month. But thank you so much for being here and taking your time to talk to us about your experiences. Um, please, if you haven't been following Ray, please follow Ray. She crochets. She's freaking awesome. She plays clo cozy games. Um, and she's just a nice person to know. Um, you know, <laughs> she's super sweet. Um, Picnic says, thank you for this honest talk um, to the both of us. Oh, Picnic, you're, you're very welcome. And we have a stream later on today, too. All right. So this is the old schedule. I didn't get the new schedule up yet, but uh, let me show it to you guys. Um, yeah, we're missing, I think we're missing this stream from this uh, schedule and also um, the stream with Clea that's coming up next week. But tonight at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern and 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific, we're going to have uh, video game therapy. We're just going to be talking about video games. Um, I don't have any descriptions on these, but I'll, let me try to remember to the best of my ability. Uh, we're just going to be talking about video games, how video games can help you, what type of games you can play to help you like decompress and stuff like that. Um, and then we're also going to be talking about when video games becomes like harmful, like when you're using it to escape life too much. And I think that happen can happen with like substance abuse and stuff like that too. Um, so, and, and also this week on Saturday, we're having a power wash party. Um, it's fairly Asian's birthday. So um, if you have power wash or you want to get power wash, feel free to join, join us. We'll clean some stuff. We'll have a good time. We're going to have a party. Um, that's 9 uh, p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. Pacific on this Saturday, I believe. Um, next week, I'm having an interview with a therapist who became an indie developer. So he might have a game for us to demo as well, but we'll be talking to him about some of these things that are coming up. I'm sure we'll be talking about narcissistic parents. Um, that'll probably be one of the talk topics. And if you need to ask him a question, you need an opinion, um, please let him know. Um, and that's the fireside chat with Layla the cat on the 16th. Um, on the 17th, um, I'm gonna be doing another dual stream first with Clea. Um, I believe that one is at, did we come up with a time? Cause I feel like that was supposed to be 3 PM uh, Pacific. I might have to look at the times. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I'm going to work out the times on that. Cause I, I think there might be a conflict. I might have to move one or two a bit later. Um, but yeah, you said 6 PM Eastern. Yeah. This one's supposed to be 6 PM Eastern too. So let me work out those times. And I'll get back to you guys. Um, I've got enough time to figure that out. Um, but it looks like I'm double booked for that day. <laughs> Maybe we can all get together. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. 
Um, on the 25th, we have game Reddit and chill. We'll be, re we'll be reading some Reddit posts. Like, I, that's one of my guilty pl pleasures is reading, like, Am I the A-hole posts and stuff like that. Um, so we'll be doing some of that. We'll be gaming, maybe play some go cozy games. And then we're going to have a show and tell on the 29th. Um, we're going to um, bring some of our favorite things that we like to decompress with and ha have around and just show each other and hang out. So that'll be fun. Um, but thank you all for being here for uh, mental health awareness, um, for listening to us and sharing your experiences and your, um, you know, your thoughts and feelings on the subject. Uh, thank you, Ray, for being here. Um, thank you guys so much for coming through. Thank you, uh, K9, for the the, do um, the, the, the the donation. I'm sorry. Um, it's it's been a busy morning. I'm st I'm not even fully awake yet. Um, we are gonna raid out. Anybody in here streaming right now? Because we will come raid you if you like. Um, let me take the schedule down too, so you guys can see us. Ray, was there anything you wanted to say to to close off? Oh, no, I, I appreciate everybody for stopping by and hearing me rant about everything. <laughs> um, and yeah, if you guys need to, feel free to reach out. I might not be the greatest at giving advice, but if you just need to get something off of your chest and know that it's not going to get spread out, just a listening ear, I'm more than happy to listen. Just don't expect good advice because I can't even follow my oh, own advice. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. One of my teammates is streaming right now, but since it is, since it is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, um, I think I'm going to go with Clea's uh, suggestion for Turtles and Chill. It's, it's a pretty cool stream. Um, you know, there's not really much talking. It's more about, like, just relaxing and chilling out they play really nice music there's like a really cool fish tank um there's like redeems where it affects the fish tank so it's it's really cool it's 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 a really great way to decompress thank you guys so much for being here again um we're gonna raid out to turtles and chill and you guys enjoy the rest of your day and if you need to talk you know my discord my DMs are always open. I might not be able to get to you right away. Oh, Thunder Punch! Thank you so much for coming through. We're just about to raid out, but uh, thank you for being here. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, but yeah, we're about to go raid out. Thank you guys for being here. Um, if you want, meet me back here at 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, 6 p.m. Oh, wait, 6 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, 6 p.m. Eastern, um, 3 p.m. Pacific for our next... Uh, our next uh, stream today um, where we're talking about video game therapy. Um, all right, so I'll see you guys. Thank you so much again. Take care. Bye. <laughs>